Hey everyone, I'm back after a bit of a break, but I've got some really cool content coming up over the next couple weeks. And so please subscribe, like the video, and this is going to be a really cool one. So I've got a pretty big list here I'm going to be looking off of. And today's question is going to be about what is the best professional clarinet for the budget oriented, or I should say a good bargain. Um, and before I get into that, I just want to say that I think every brand makes some good clarinets, that's for sure. Um, I own half a dozen buffets personally, <clears throat> and I'll tell you right now, the big bargain is not a buffet. And having said that, I do love them very much. So the winner is actually going to be this Bakun clarinet right here. This is uh, what a lot of people call the Bakun custom clarinet or the Bakun B flat. Um, and kind of in this segment, I'm going to also include the Model F, the MOBA, the Q series. Um, definitely not the Lumiere or the CG because those are just way too expensive. Um, but yeah, I think that these are a really good deal and I've got quite a few reasons to justify why. So we'll get into that right here. Um, before we really get into the features, one thing I want to make really clear is I think that buffets do have some good advantages over this. Um, some of the newer Selmers do as well, um, but we could, we'll get into that a little bit later. So some of the features that I see here that are really notable first are the fact that all of these posts are actually screwed in with Phillips screws, as you can see right here. Every single post on the entire body, all with Phillips screws. That's just an interesting touch. I've never really seen that done before. Um, another thing that is really surprising is all of your side springs here use coil springs and not the traditional leaf. You can see right there the spring compressing only on Bakun clarinets. It's a really cool feature. In addition, we have separate post mounting on these side keys. One, two, three, four. That's not anything really special to Bakun. LeBlanc does that. There's a few other companies that do. Um, another thing is you won't really find any corks on here. You're going to see a lot of felts. Let's see if I can find one around here. All of these bumpers basically are all felt from the factory. And I'm sure there's a few more. I'm just kind of having a hard time. Here's another one right there. Another felt. So all of the bumpers are felt. And <clears throat> that's really nice because it's a little bit quieter than cork, at least on the, the kind of harsh noises of the keys hitting together and things like that. Um, another thing. We have carbon fiber tenon caps. It'll be a little bit hard because my lighting is a little poor, but see if it'll focus. There we go. So you can see right here, these tenon caps are in fact carbon fiber. There's a little bit of an overlap on the inside here, but it's that way on all three sections of the joints. Also, this is some of the best silver plating that I've ever seen on any instrument. It is very consistent. It's just really, really wonderful. And I did buy this instrument used as well, and it's in just fantastic condition. It was, it was used quite a bit before, but um, also we have a raised low E high B, uh, high B tone hole right here, which is kind of kind of unique. You can see that the low F, high C is not like that. Another thing is the F sharp and E flat trill key are actually attached. They overlap just a little bit to where the F sharp pushes down on the E flat and they both open together, which is a really cool feature with this. 
And what that does is it helps with intonation and it just makes this instrument a lot nicer on those side trill keys. Um, another thing that is very noticeable is that there are adjustment screws everywhere all over this instrument. There's two right there. There's two more underneath the crow's foot. There's one on the bridge key. I mean, they're just everywhere. Places that never seen them before on other instruments. And what that's going to do is that's going to make adjustment services and certain repair procedures a little bit cheaper, which is really nice because rather than having to recork one of these keys and take the instrument apart, you can just tighten or loosen one of those screws. So that means it may need to go into the shop a little bit less, and when it does, it might be an easier fix. <clears throat> so that's another pro of having a Bakun clarinet over some of the competitors, and I know more of them are starting to get common adjustment screws and things like that, which is really nice. I think it's, it's a good thing, and I really like that these newer brands like Royal and Bakun are making Buffet and Selmer become a little bit more competitive and they're coming out with some really cool stuff in recent history. Um, another thing is this forked side key right here is actually separate post mounted as well. It's all on the same post actually, but you can see it has a separate screw that goes through it. So that's just another thing to note. And that's for that's for the E flat, A flat key right here. And another thing is this has synthetic pads. These are all, I believe they're black Valentinos. Maybe a little hard to see, but you'll be able to see that they're not white pads. And that is along the whole instrument. They're all black synthetic pads. And these are original pads for this instrument. It's not very old, but they've held up very well over time, which is another plus is you won't be having repads every 10 years or so or having to change pads intermittently. These will probably be good for another 20 years realistically. So that's another plus. Um, one of the last features with this is this will be really tough to see. But actually, it won't. There's a voicing groove inside of this bell. And Bakun does this on a lot of their aftermarket bells. You can pay a little bit of extra money to get a voicing groove. However, it comes standard with this instrument. And I believe that these are not in production anymore. Somebody can correct me on that. Um, but that's just another cool thing. And this barrel here, it is a MOBA barrel. But... It, the rest of the clarinet is part of just the Bakun Custom line, which never really got a name like the Q series, the MOBA, Model F, Lumiere. It's just kind of called the Bakun B-flat clarinet. So, But what I was told is that this MOBA barrel is what was ordered with this clarinet. So another interesting thing to note. Um, another thing that isn't really a concrete fact, but a lot of people claim to have lower chances of cracking with Bakun clarinets than they do with Selmer's, Buffet's, other brands like that. Um, you know, whether this is true or not, that's debatable, but just an interesting thing. They do go through a lot of work and they have a lot of pride in the wood that they produce, and I think that's really cool. Um, now we're going to get into the playability section, which I'm not going to play this instrument right now, but this this will just be my opinion on it, and that's all it is. It's my opinion. If it helps, then that's great. Um, I did a lot of intonation testing with this instrument versus I was playing a buffet festival before, and this was quite a bit better. Um, doing eyes closed, putting both instruments onto a tuner, and then playing intervals and then recording the intonation difference and how far it was off from zero. And then adding all of the, that total and then that kind of shows you how out of tune an instrument is. So I did that with both instruments and this was quite a bit better overall. It was, I think it was a good 15 cents over the whole range that I played. Um, and keep in mind the festival is not a bad horn at all, but it's just this was quite a bit better. You can tell 
that they've put quite a bit more time into making this a really good instrument. And that festival was like a 2015, so it was fairly new. Um, the other thing that I would probably say um, is that overall I think that buffets have a little bit nicer of a sound to them than this clarinet does. And that's, once again, that's just my opinion on the whole matter. I like the way that I sound better playing buffet products than I do with this. But the trade-off that makes it worth it for me to have something like this is because the amount of effort that it takes to make a good sound on this is significantly less than it is on pretty much all of the buffet products. And the thing is, is when I first tried this, and I've heard this from other people, when they try bacoons, they don't like them at first because they're used to the older, more traditional instruments that they're used to playing on. And what's really cool is I didn't like this when I first got it. And after playing it for probably a good week or so pretty solidly, I really fell in love with it. And playing it back and back to back with my festival, um, there's no comparison at all. Um, I probably still stand with the fact that I like the way I sounded better with the buffet, but just the effort that it requires is so much easier. And we're going to throw out the whole disrepair variable because my festival was in great condition. This is in great condition. No leaks on either one of them. So they're both really well set up and everything. The other thing I like about this is you have lots of accessories you can choose from. They make different thumb rests for bassoons. I don't have one, but there's one that actually hooks onto part of your hand right here that allows you to have a little bit better grip. You have all your aftermarket bells, aftermarket barrels, aftermarket register tubes, thumb tubes, everything. And you can really set these up whatever way you want to, whatever's best for your playing, which I think is really cool. Whether it's necessary or not, that's up to you, but I just think that's really nice that they allow you to do that. Um, another thing I don't want to understate at all is if you have a Buffet R13 or a Festival Tradition, even a Tosca or something like that, <clears throat> this barrel or maybe this bell would probably make a huge difference on the way that it feels, sounds, intonation, things like that, because I have a couple other um, Bakun barrels here. I've got a 69 millimeter MOBA. This one's a 64 right here, and I use this one for my A clarinets, and then I also have a Bakun Lumiere barrel. And in addition to that, I also have a Clark Phobes barrel and a couple other aftermarket barrels that I've acquired over the years. And without question, in my opinion, these Bakun barrels are as good as it gets. Um, I think they're all really good, even the more affordable ones that are like $60, $70, $80, $100 in that range. Those make almost as big of a difference as the MOBA and the Lumiere that's almost pushing two, three hundred dollars, I think, last time I checked. So that's another thing to note. Just because <clears throat> if you're unsatisfied with your instrument and you try a bassoon and you absolutely love it, take the barrel and the bell off, stick it on your instrument, and play them both back to back again and kind of just see what you think because these barrels, when you stick it on and you try it, it may not feel like much, but you play it for a couple days, I guarantee you it'll make a huge difference. So that's just another thing. Um, and in, on the whole topic of bassoons, I'm not really going to include the protege or the beta in any of this because those aren't really in the professional realm of things. And I've tried proteges, they're great horns, but they just, they don't leave you saying, wow, this is really incredible. And that's what we're wanting to go for with kind of best in the world type horns. So, um, and like I said, this is not perfect. I'm going to go over a few cons and that's what we'll do right now. Um, looking at price, I think probably the cheapest would be the Q series. You can find those used relatively affordable, like around maybe $2,500 right now. <clears throat> These Bakun Customs are a little bit more expensive. 
um, kind of in the three, four thousand dollar range in there. Um, the MOBAs are around the same price and the Model Fs are once again kind of around the same price. So you're looking at spending probably a minimum of $2,500 to get a Bakun professional level horn if you buy one used on an auction site of some sort. But price I would say is a con because you can get a pre R13 or an R13 for about a thousand bucks and put a little bit of money to make it play really well and you're good to go and you have a great horn. So there, it all depends on what amount of effort you want to put into it and kind of what you're looking to do. And I would definitely try them back to back for sure before you make a decision. Um, the other thing is, as you've probably seen, this has a pretty radical design of the key work. And one key that doesn't fit my hands very well is the F and C key right here. This key on this instrument does not feel good in my opinion because even with my longer fingers I really have to reach in order to kind of get the very tip of that key. And that's the one flaw I can think of key work wise that's a little bit uncomfortable. So especially because of the radical key work design I would really advise you test one of these before you buy it or anything like that just because this is very different than anything else. It's not very traditional and it's just important to make sure that's going to work. Um, another thing, parts might be a little harder to find if you need to have repairs done. Um, these are also getting harder to find used just because they're becoming really popular on the used market because they're very expensive new. Um, and then once again the sound. Like I said, I prefer the buffet sound for me playing but it's a trade-off worth making for me. So anyways, that's it. This is what I think is probably one of the best professional clarinets you can buy as for from a value standpoint. So please subscribe, like this video, comment if you have any questions, and see you in the next one.